Hi, this is um, a video boost. I'm not sure what number it is right now, but I'll put a number on it. Um, I want to remind you again to do your five a day. Okay, I just graded your quizzes on conformational analysis, and I don't know why, but a lot of people are ranking things kind of funny. And you really should be counting um, the number of Gauche interactions, and you really should be considering bigger interactions as more important. In other words, steric interactions kind of increase exponentially. Okay, so for example, just as an example, I, I'm not sure why there was kind of this general idea, but if you have a conformer like this, that's like this, that has two, and I'll symbolize my Gauche interactions this way, they're steric interactions, two Gauche interactions like that, that is lower energy than, say, this conformer. And I just saw this a lot, so I'm a little concerned about it. And we don't have a lot of time to go back right now to review all this. But this kind of conformer has three Gauche interactions. And really, ethyls are not really that much bigger than methyls. So this conformer is lower energy than this conformer, okay? Similarly, a conformer like this where there are two relatively large groups, and by large we mean having some bulk on top of each other, is, um, is higher energy than a conformer like this. And I just saw a lot of this. This is why I'm a little worried about it. Than a conformer that looks like this. So a lot of people were ranking this kind of conformer as being higher energy than this. However, these interactions are much bigger because the methyl groups are really reaching in toward each other. So you should look at your models because this H really isn't very close to that methyl. These are very small steric interactions, whereas these are rather large, okay? So again, this one would be highest here, and this one would be lowest, okay? While I'm on the subject of conformers, I want to talk a little bit about chair cyclohexane. And I want to reiterate again that the only thing you're looking at when you're doing a conformational analysis of a cyclohexane is the, are the 1,3 uh, dioxyl interactions normally. That's what you're looking at. And to give you a little uh, boost as to how to do this, for example, supposing I had this specific stereoisomer to draw. I realize this is somewhat like, um, I'll make it a little different, somewhat like what we did in um, class. If you're going to put that in a chair, what you need to do is envision taking this ring and flipping it up on its side like that. This bond will end up in the front this bond will end up in the back. Sometimes this bothers people a little bit when they go from what is called an aerial view to a side view. Well, we're going to go to the side view. I'm just going to draw any old chair. That's just any old chair. I'm going to number this one, two, three, four, five, six. Now again, this bond is going to end up at the front. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, and this is six. Okay, one and four are right in the plane of the board. It's hard for people to get used to this idea. Now, what I tell people to do as a systematic method is when they turn this over, anything that's a wedge is going to be up, and anything that's a hash is going to be down. Okay, now again, you could go the other way, like you could flip it down that way, and it would be the reverse, but most people just pick it up like this, and put it on its side. And again, this bond, you know, maybe this helps a little bit, but this is in the front. You don't need to put those wedges in though, okay? So if I start at number one, the bromine is a, a wedge, so it has to be in an up position. This is where you really have to know your chair, 
And you really have to know axial and equatorial. So, but the first question is, is it up or down? Not is it axial or equatorial? So I would say it's up, but up in this position is equatorial. So I put the bromine here. Down in this position is axial. So I would put the methyl in the axial position. Moving over to number three, this is going to be in a down position because it's a wedge. So in this position, down is axial. Now again, I'm just arbitrarily drawing one of the two chairs. If I work my way over to five, this is a wedge. So it's going to be up, but up on this position is equatorial. And you have to practice. It bugs people a little bit because the equatorial positions in the front and the back are really coming out and going back. But you don't need to put the wedges in. This is why I recommend that you draw the basic chair about 10 or 15 times and flip it so that you get it down cold. Now, once you get the proper stereoisomer drawn, as I've done, right, think about it. If you, flip, if you switch those two groups, you would have a diastereomer. This would invert the center. But I would flip this chair. And when you flip the chair, the bromine's going to go axial. The methyl's going to go equatorial. This ethyl group is going to become equatorial. And then this group is going to become axial. And the analysis of chairs comes down to counting the number of 1,3 diaxial interactions, and in some cases, assigning values to them. Now, in looking at this particular example, where am I with time? Almost seven minutes. Okay. Looking at this particular example, on the bottom, I have an ethyl interacting with a hydrogen. I have a methyl with an ethyl. These are 1,3 diaxial interactions. Obviously, a methyl ethyl is bigger than an ethyl hydrogen. And I have <coughs> a methyl with a hydrogen. Okay? Those are three um, interactions. This is probably about 4 kilojoules. This is about 4 kilojoules. This is much larger than that. Now, let's see if it's any different over here. What I have here on the top only, I have a bromine interacting with an ethyl, a bromine interacting with a hydrogen, and um, an ethyl interacting with a hydrogen. And I'll tell you right now, this is a case where you would need numbers because you have three interactions here, three interactions here. Some, one of them is the same, so obviously this one's the same as this one. But what I'll tell you right now is a bromine, sterically is smaller than an ethyl or a methyl. So, the equilibrium in this case would actually lie, in all likelihood, in this direction. Um, as I said, sometimes you need more information to do the problem. But this is really what a conformational analysis consists of. And what I was mainly trying to show you is how to convert an aerial view of a chiral ring into a chair. So I'll see you in class.